I want to address today something that we've talked about twice in the past. Let me, let me click go here. And this started out back in July, where uh, and this is going on in the options trading world. Is there's a lot of buzz about this huge VIX trader, and uh, with some big bets, some big bets on the VIX started out in July, and this was in the Wall Street Journal. And uh, you can go and see. I mean, it occupied a lot of space. They went into great detail, explained the trade, explained the price that each leg was that this trader went into. And uh, um, we addressed it back in July. You can see down here. We talked about it on July 25th when that article came out. And then some months later, we did a follow-up. And we're going to do another follow-up today just to kind of apprise you of, of what's gone on with this trader. He's still at it, believe it or not, banking on the VIX to blast off to the upside. And folks are speculating that it's a hedge on some other positions. But I think it's very instructive if, if, if anyone, especially if you have portfolio margining, and you could sell naked options on the VIX, um, wow. I mean, take a look at this. This is very interesting stuff. So. Um, here is the progression of how things have gone. Back in July, all right, this Vix, the, the Vix elephant, they call him, put on the position and has rolled it now three times, most recently as of last Friday. Most recently as of last Friday. So he rolled it in September, all right, rolling it out again in in the very beginning of December. And then here, most recently, on Friday. Now, um, one thing, it, just a little note, on this December roll, look at this. Um, this is a day that it, the, the VIX just blasted off, went up a couple points or more, and then came back down. And right in the middle of here, when it was rising, is when he ended up rolling. And this was the difference between losing probably $20 million on the position he put on here and losing $2 million. At one point, way up here at the top, uh, his position was up $6 million. All right, so from being down, from being down over $20 million to being up over six, and then he got out, somewhere along the line, he got, he rolled the position when he was just down $2 million, and it worked out real well for him. They think they know who this guy is, by the way. So what I want to do is go back and take a look at the spread and then uh, just give you an idea of how well he's done all the way through uh, the total amount of losses accumulated while he's waiting for the VIX to blast off to 25 or so. So let's go back and look. Back in July, he put it on on the 21st. It was reported on the 25th. And here's the position. Basically, He's doing a ratio right in the calls in addition to a naked put position. Doing it at the 12 puts and then the 15 and 25 ratio right. And all three rolls uh, have resulted in this exact same set of strikes simply being rolled forward. Okay, He hasn't altered the, the uh, uh, strikes at all. Um, now one way, one, one you know, partway along the line, one of those rolls, he added a fourth strike where he just went long some distant calls in addition to this. But that was just one time, and, uh, and he bought those calls for like 49 cents, and that's why uh, some call him 50 cent <laughs> after the wrapper because he likes to buy uh, options, and he likes to buy call options that are, that are priced around 50 cents. But here are the uh, quantities that he kicked it off at, 260, 260, and 5. And this comes from the articles that were available at the time. And so here's what the position looked like in option view back then. A ratio right where he's buying some calls here, roughly half of the number of calls that he's selling way up here. All right, now he's not gathering enough here to pay for these calls in total. All right, so and that's important to keep in mind because that then predicates the need to come down here in the puts and sell some to lift it up. Let's analyze this position. And just keep in mind, this is the same basic position that he's rolled forward 
um, you know, really three times now. Okay, and so here's what it looks like in total, but let's break this down piece by piece. Um, you can kind of see back then when the price, when the VIX was around 10, okay, he's selling that 25 strike, but let's just break this down here. It's basically a ratio right, and we'll look at that first, then we'll look at the naked foot. So the ratio right, and we're just breaking it down to a one by two, okay, you buy a call, sell two way up here. You're not bringing in enough to pay for the calls, but let's just analyze this ratio right by itself and you'll kind of see where we're at. So we buy a call right here, okay? We buy that call and, and then it's, and then, uh, uh, and it's, a, it's an out of the money call. And then we go farther out of the money and sell two up here, okay? And we just leave it at that. Okay, we don't do anything to cover this one. We don't come further out and make it and cover it. Um, and so this institutional type trader, you know, clearly has the uh, margining ability to sell this naked call way up there. Okay, now to, here's the problem here. Look at all. I mean, this break even is way over here beyond 15 here in 89 days. So what he's going to figure out a way to do is to just lift this whole thing straight up. How can you lift this whole thing straight up so that ideally this line here, some of it might even be uh, above the zero break even line? And so here's what he did. He went down in the puts and, and brought in some cash to lift that whole thing up. He sold the 12 put, which is an in the money put. Okay. And it lifts some of the line up, not all of it coming out here, but some of it. So that at least he'll he'll break even at expiration if the market just moves up a little bit here. And the break even is you can kind of see the break even originally with the ratio right was way over here past 15. Now by lifting it up over up to here, he, he drops that down to basically 11.8 from 15, 15 and a half. His break even drops huge there, which is nice. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, gosh, look at all this that the VIX elephant can lose down here. Look at that. All right, now remember, though, we're dealing with the VIX, okay? And you have to wonder, with the VIX, how feasible is it that it could drop to four or six, okay, or even eight? Let's go take a look and see at the premise here. Here's the places where he rolled, but look how low the VIX is gone. And I'll show you another chart. Here, let me go to the next one. Here we go. This is a uh, this is going back to 2002. This is the VIX. And the VIX, rare, I mean, it's usually up over 10. When it drops below 10, it just skims it just barely like it is now. I mean, this is about as low as it has been in a long, long time. And by selling that 25 uh, call. Let's just go back here. Okay. Here, let's go back to the original position and take a look uh, at the millions. Look at this. Okay. If this works out and at expiration, it works out that the VIX is at 25. Okay. He's going to make well over $200 million. Well over $200 million. Yet what is this trader risking over time here? Okay, what's the likelihood it's going to go to five? Not very much. It's barely ever been below 10 even. But there is some time decay working on this position. So he definitely needs this thing to move up. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's kind of what we're looking at here. The break even was there. It's unlikely it's going to come down here. It's more likely that it's going to wobble around here around 9, 10, maybe 11, and he starts eating it in time decay as he's waiting for the market to make its its move eventually. That's what he's banking on. And um, you can kind of come back here. All he needs for it to do is to go up over 20. Even if he gets to 25, I mean, it has been there often. Look at this. You go back in the past, and it just doesn't hover down at 10 for very long before popping over 20 eventually. Eventually. All right. So... Let's go back and look. Even if it just goes over 20, what does he get from that? 
Let's, let's go back to the millions one. Here we go. If he just gets it to pop to 20 here sometime, right here, if it comes over to 20, okay, he's going to make anywhere from, depending on the time frame, 140 to over 200 million. Just outstanding. Meanwhile, he's getting chipped away on time decay slowly over here. So let's look and see how it's gone for him so far, okay? Because he made some money here, it came down and he wasn't, and he didn't get out of it. He rolled it here, ate it in time decay for, you know, again, and then ate it in time decay again before rolling it on Friday. All right, so here's where the first roll was reported back in September 25th, and I'm going to show you the T-log with the prices that I could ascertain from all these articles over time. I've kind of backed into it. You're going to get the T-log. If you want to follow along, you certainly you can just type in the latest position he has and just kind of watch it. It, 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 it certainly is instructive, and um, it's interesting that a high-level trader like this with millions uh, has put together a pretty darn interesting little trade. I mean, it's not going to lose that much relative to what it can pay out if and when the market does you know, do, make a serious correction and, and VIX goes up over 20. He's going to make several times what his risk was. So this was the first roll reported. Then on December 1st, uh, we had that situation where the market spiked downward and came back. The VIX spiked upward. He got out, instead of losing over $20 million, instead lost only 2 and he rolled at the same time, and that was that really caught everyone's imagination how well he executed that. And, uh, um, I mean, and he just, and, and it was well timed. He could have squeezed it for more, but he just took what he just. He could have had a six million dollar gain right at the peak, but who wants to try that? It took him probably a little while to get that deal off. Finally, here on January 11th, this came out in Yahoo Finance and other market publications as well, reporting on the third roll. I couldn't find the exact prices. I tried to back into it, and I think I nailed it pretty darn well. Um, and I'll show you why in just a little bit, because one of these says that uh, in all, he was down about 45 million. After rolling it three times, he was down 45 million. And when I went ahead and ran my numbers and I had the day-by-day -day look, I was pretty darn close. And so Bloomberg has been following along in their own portfolio manager. And um, yeah, I'll come back to this, but I've done the same thing. I've done the same thing with the, uh, uh, I've created an account called VIX Elephant. I've been following along day by day, and um, uh, I'm going to give you the prices and the, uh, the trades a lot as well. So you can, uh, if you wanted to, you know, go back and duplicate this, you certainly could. But here, Bloomberg, I was real pleased to see Bloomberg came out with this period where he lost a little over 50 at one point, and I had him right about at the same level. Very, very close down here. So I was pretty, I was real pleased with that. Um, but you could see 721, he initiated it. He rolled at 925 here. And then he was losing, look at this, he was losing over 30 million just two days prior to the market spiking downward. VIX spiked upward, and he got out with a little $2 million loss on that particular leg. All right, you can kind of see he uh, was here and he dropped to there. Not too bad. And then since that roll on December 1st, of course, it's been downhill ever since. But he's persisting. He's persisting. On Friday, he rolled it again. And here is the T-log for your uh, education if you want. Look at these quantities, though. My gosh. So what I did is I went and recoded the R column, and I coded it October, and then he rolled it to the December, and then he rolled it to Jan, and he had a little fourth leg going on. He had a um, he had a little fifty thousand lot call that he bought for fifty cents initially. So there's his that's the that gives him the nickname fifty cent, and then he closed that out, and finally on Friday rolled it over to Feb. And these are the prices I could ascertain, and it worked out to where um, the cumulative loss is kind of exactly what's been reported. 
And here are the three legs. His initial one resulted in a loss of roughly nine million. His second one, that's about as close to the two million mark I could get. One reporter said he lost about 1.6. So I kind of put it right in the middle there, worked out real well. And then look at this, this last leg, boy, ooh, tough, real tough. So uh, where, oh, and then you could kind of see, the one, one, one reporter said he's lost about the estimated 45 million, and that's about as close as we could come given these prices, and especially these quantities. Is crazy. Okay, here's where he is now. Here is the ratio right, purchasing the 15s, 58 cents, 262,500 contracts, selling 525,000 contracts of the 25s, coming down to the puts, selling an in the money put here um, for a buck 43. Okay, at 262,500 contracts. Um, these are option views estimates of the net requirements. I think you can surmise that someone like this has special arrangements with their prime broker. And um, when you look at this, that's where it's at. He's down. Now, this is just this position. This does not include the cumulative 45 million loss. But you could see if, in fact, the market, if the VIX moves up to 20, all right, He's on this position. He's going to make over 180 million right there. Now he's already given up 45. So to break even, all he needs for it to do is to, you know, in the next, you know, couple weeks, if it were to just, if the VIX were to climb to something in the 12s, he'll have made his money back. And then, of course, over the next few weeks, if it climbs further, I mean, now, and if it gets over 15 and a half. And then we get into that, you know, the market's making a serious correction. Look at then he's looking at some serious payoff here. All right. And that's it. That's where he's at. And we'll visit this probably in a month or so. Just see if he's uh, bailed out or if the market's made a correction. And if it does, we'll just keep tabs because there's a ton of reporters out there watching this guy and, uh, uh, you know, watching to see what he does. Any questions, comments? Kind of fun stuff. And by the way, you could go ahead and put in a little one lot, two lots, three lots of this same trade, and you'll see the original requirement. And if your broker allows you to sell naked puts on the VIX, you could get in on this. I, it, it's not possible that I could find to do it with credit spreads. And covered options, he's he's really teeing off on his ability to sell naked options on both sides, and uh, the fact that VIX is probably never going to go down, you know, down here in the sevens, eights area. That's kind of unrealistic, um, but he's he's limited risk with an incredible uh, 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 potential for gain here, as the market's gone on and on and on without VIX going up to even eighteen in a while, much less 20 or much less 25 up here. Holy cow. All right. OK, folks, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another topic. You have suggestions for uh, things you see in the news, other educators, other newsletters. Give me a shout. Shoot me an email, steve at optionview.com. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.